If I could get a quick show of hands, who tweets? Well, yeah, who tries to tweet? So we have Twitter, and how many of you, like, or maybe don't even have an account? Anybody here not have an account? All right, good, good to know, good to know. Okay, I feel like when this is done, we should get in a big circle and plan an event because we've got like hair and events and music and we have a place and we can have a photographer. I mean, this is a pretty fun group. Um, I am an educator. I deal well with questions, so if you have one, shoot your hand up. You're not gonna throw me off my game. My game's not that strong to begin with. So Twitter's been in the news a ton. How many of you like feel like you know what Twitter is about and could describe? Okay, which is actually really impressive because what I've been hearing in the news a lot lately is Twitter doesn't even know like what they're about. Um, Twitter, <laughs> um, everybody for the last couple months has felt like Twitter's gonna get bought out at any moment. Um, a lot of their top management left and everybody's kind of like all freaked out about um, Twitter. And I have like kind of a fun little short little clip um, from the Twitter website. That's the one thing about these social media platforms that I will tell you, and I'll show you some stuff today. They really, really, really want you to know how to use their platform, right? They're constantly putting up case studies, best practices, training videos. Their YouTube channels are usually pretty strong. Um, they'll do anything they can to get you really well versed in their platform and comfortable with it if you have all the time to go look at all of those resources because what they're trying to do is monetize you. I think this is kind of interesting, a little full circle moment with what Twitter is about. Um, and I wanted to share it really We quickly. started Twitter with a very simple idea. We started it because we wanted to see it. We loved it. And we kept building it because we wanted to see other people use it. There's a series of moments. There's no one big moment. And each time I was like, oh, that's happening? Well, that means this other thing might happen. And then who knows what might happen next? We just never thought it would go this way. And I, I honestly think that's part of the reason why we succeeded. It's such a simple tool, yet people have done so many amazing things with it. We're not able, we may end up in the Nazis. I'm in custody, but nobody inside the perimeter. You're able to have these multi-directional conversations. You're not just broadcasting, you're there in the middle of it. I am gonna make history here as the first president to live tweet. I'm using Twitter to send pictures and thoughts from space, and every day, I really enjoy reading your tweets. There's an incredible leveling of the playing field that gives every voice the ability to echo around the world instantly. And that democratization of content creation and sharing facilitates these connections that we see every day around the world that we would have never seen before the possibilities and the opportunities afforded by the platform are, are limitless. So I think what I take from that is when they started Twitter, they weren't really convinced that anybody was going to overthrow a government with it. It's actually what happened. <laughs> Nobody knew we'd be using it to try and keep tabs on loved ones in Paris because of terrorists. I mean, like, Nobody knew all that stuff, right? We, and now that's what it is. And I think that's why the Twitter corporation is really kind of um, hesitant to say this is what we are, kind of like what Facebook is doing. And this is hilarious to me, but there are um, increases in revenue, which where's that coming from, by the way? You guys. <laughs> Uh, just so you know, I've never paid a dime on Twitter and never will. That's you guys. Um, so their revenue is actually going up and up and up. Their stock is just plummeting. Wall Street's mad at them. Everybody thinks they've lost their minds. Um, and on the third bullet point, they're losing money and losing users, right? Which is kind of reactionary based on you know, what we're seeing. But when their CEO keeps saying, we're not really sure what we want to be, we're not sure who we want to be, that's not where anybody expects a company to be, but they're very hesitant to do some of the things. Um, they're really trying, though. So if you kind of feel like you're walking through a minefield and you don't really know what to do, neither does Twitter. That's the whole reason I wanted to take a minute and just say it's okay. They haven't figured it out either. But there are ways to keep in touch with what Twitter is trying to do. One of those is their announcements page. 
So the Twitter website has a blog for you to try to keep up with all the changes that they're making. Um, one of the new things they have is a new customer service product, which is kind of fun. Um, and if you get comfortable with it, then it's something you can extend, I believe, to your customers and give them a comfort level with it. Um, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time about it, talking about it because um, that jumps us way ahead of like where we are. But it's a way for your customers to contact you via direct message, which we'll talk about, for you to respond, and then for you to send them back a feedback tool that says, hey, was that good? Did we close this issue type thing? And if they give you like a little blurb in there, like a testimonial, you can grab that and use it. So there's some really good stuff that they're doing, um, especially aimed at businesses, because again, um, that's where they're making their money is serving you guys. Um, so that's the good stuff there. Sometimes your success on tweeting is to just tweet often, repeat it, get yourself a good hashtag, newsjacking, I'll talk about that towards the end, um, tagging people, having the conversation. Remember, it's not a monologue, it's a dialogue. Like have that conversation um, with people. Same reason um, best posts on Facebook include pictures or videos. Same reason everybody's migrating to Snapchat and Instagram, because we love a visual. Some of the really just things you do not want to do on Twitter is not pay attention. Like, especially if you're going to open a business account. If you have a personal account, you don't have to pay attention, right? That's not that big a deal. Um, but if you have a business account, it's labeled as a business account, it's on your website that you have a Twitter, and people can click from your website and go to your Twitter, and then they get there and you haven't done anything with it in six or eight months. That doesn't mean they're not going to give you your, your business, right? It just means you're not updating your Twitter. Is that a positive or negative? I don't know, right? I mean, it seems pretty easy. Other people are doing it, and you're there. So make your decision to be there and tell everyone you're there intentional. Like, don't be there and tell everybody you're there if you're not going to go there. Um, don't do a ton of self-promoting. It's okay to promote your business, but there are other ways to go about it. We'll talk about that at the end. Add value, right? Add value. I follow a photographer on Facebook. I've never met her, probably never will, but the reason I love her is because she shows before and after Photoshop stuff. I don't even have Photoshop. <laughs> probably couldn't do what she's doing if I tried, but I'm fascinated by that. So I follow her. Now I think about it, I haven't seen her stuff forever because she's probably not paying for me to see it. You know, like that's the hard thing why we're getting frustrated with Facebook and that's where Twitter doesn't want to go. Um, make sure you're honest, you're not selling stuff. The being honest thing comes from like if somebody just like gives a negative feedback about your business and you go in and delete it, right? This is a world where somebody can screenshot that it was there, then they're going to like tweet out that you took it down and all of a sudden, you look like a worse person than you did when you just weren't able to give something to someone free or whatever it was they were. Leave the bad stuff up, right? It's just like if I walked into your business and said, hey, I'm not really happy with this haircut. What are you gonna do? You're gonna get me in a chair and get me happy, right? Um, first of all, you're gonna understand I had realistic expectations, which doesn't happen very often when I go get my haircut. I always walk in and be like, I wanna look like this. And like, no, I just do hair. <laughs> um, <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> right? But you, you work with the person and when they leave, you're like, you're happy, everything good. You can do the same thing here. Just, and it's okay to do it publicly, right? Because all that says is, hey, we're human. We're providing a service which is dependent on other humans. There was some human miscommunication. You're upset. Are you happy now, right? And that just says, okay, I have one less notch of risk in doing business with the Salon Academy. I feel good about everything else, right? Um, the theater. Probably people are already generating content. I'm going here to this. I'm here for that. Here's my selfie here. Here's a reusing their content, being there to search for your mentions and sharing that is free, right? People are already talking about you for free. It would just be like leaning over and telling the person next to you, I don't know if you know about this, but here's what we do, right? Share it. It's already there. So, and that's not a hard sell. And that's even replying back to somebody and be like, oh my gosh, Megan, so glad you had a good time. Or how about that selfie, you know, coming up with a hashtag or something for that. Um, don't necessarily follow everyone back. It's not why people are following you. 
and then it gets really hard to manage. Um, so be real careful. <laughs> there are people who are always, you know, come up on Twitter on certain days and they'll be like, if I get to 400 friends, I'll be so happy, follow me. And I think, I'm following you, I wouldn't see that tweet. <laughs> like, you, you, <laughs> okay, <laughs> like, can we talk about this? This is not the best, pro you know, not the best approach. So, I mean, there's just some things you can do to just let this kind of happen on its own. Um, if you don't use Twitter, like personally, don't make the professional one your debut. Like, get comfortable with it, right? Um, be, be comfortable and intentional, because the last thing you want is for your business to be tweeting out, I'm so new, I don't know how this works, right? Like, like play with it for a while. You can open an account and lock it and people can't see it. You can do that with your business, it's okay. You can do it for a while and then change the name. There's ways to get there and get comfortable and mess around a little bit before you, like, launch your, and I'm not here to tell you that the minute you turn it on live for your business, you're gonna get inundated with all kinds of great stuff because you're gonna have to work on it a little bit. Same thing with the reason you're in business. It's all about people, right? Social media is about people. It's not about your business. This is an extension of your brand. It's an extension of the customer experience. It's the extension of the customer journey. And that's kind of what, you know, towards the end today, what I wanna leave you with. So let's take a look at profiles. I've got some things I wanna cover about how to go in and set up your Twitter and things that you can do. Um, the very first and probably most important thing, and the good news is you're not gonna chisel this in any kind of stone. You can change it as often as you want to. But your um, description is where you can really like drive some things home. This is gonna be where you can get some search engine optimization. One of my favorite people to follow, Jay Bear. He's got his personal Twitter is what we're on. And then this is his business Twitter. He went ahead and put here so you could just click and go right to it. And his website. Okay. And then if you notice his, what else has he done here to promote himself? Yeah, his avatar is his snap. So like you can screenshot that and go follow him immediately on Snapchat. So I can engage with him here, I can engage with him here, I can engage with him where I'm already at, or I can go engage with him here. Whew, it's a lot of engagement, Jay. Um, Jay just put out a new book, so there's his cover photo, right? Um, cover photo's huge, you can change that out a lot. If you have things coming up, if you um, have a show, a new um, things going on, different releases, whatever you have going on in your business, you can constantly change that. Good headshots or business shots, something that's clear and easy to see. Um, I do not love that giant picture of my head, but if that's who I am and it's a headshot, right? Um, we could talk a lot about photography, <laughs> how important those things are, but there's really nothing worse than trying to figure out who someone is or if you know someone or recognize their building if they put their business um, up and it's really small. And don't leave the egg up there either. The egg is kind of like, that's not real, right? The egg is the what goes up there before you put your picture up there. Um, personally, if you want to put family pictures, um, if you have pictures of you and your employees, whatever, I mean, this is maybe not the place to do like, and this one is tough too. You're gonna have to Google the dimensions and resolution and everything of your cover photo, um, because that's a tough one, and it looks different on the screen than it does on my laptop, which looks completely different on my phone. I worked for probably 40 minutes to get a good cover photo that I was happy with, and I'm not even happy with that one. You can give um, information here. Like, I just put where I live. You can actually go in and put the latitude and longitude of your business if you want, and it will, people can click on that, and you will show up on Google Maps. Like, there's a lot of really good information that you can give this. Um, very search engine optimized. If I go on Google and Google myself, um, my Twitter comes up. There are people out there who will say this is necessary. There are people out there who will say don't do it. I do it because I'm really proud of where I work and I do a lot of stuff about where I work, but I'm also very opinionated on a million other things. And if I wanna like or retweet something that makes Donald Trump look like an idiot, then I'm gonna do that, and that is not necessarily anything that anyone else at work would be on board with, right? Like, that's the beauty of social media. It's the social part of me. 
I don't do that on the fall school business page. I have before because I forgot what account I'm under, but you can go delete that stuff. <laughs> it's really easy. Um, so yeah, I don't know that anyone is sending their child to Anderson University because they have a sarcastic business professor, but that's who I am, right? Like, I'm not changing who I am to be on Twitter. I'm not hiding the fact that where I work. So I just put like the little disclaimer, plus the disclaimer is funny. I worked on that for a while, so I'm happy with it. I'm not saying you have to use it. It doesn't even really matter. There are companies out there that will like require you to do those things. and. You can get all mired up. If you are a business owner and you have employees, that is something you need to think about is where's their line and how do you hold them accountable for things that they've done, right? We've all seen like the Applebee's waitress who lost her job because somebody didn't tip her and she took a picture of the receipt with the person's signature and like tweeted it out. They fired her, which is probably the right thing to do. But then she tweeted out that she got fired, and then Twitter got mad, and then Facebook caught on, and then the whole world was on top of it, and other people were offering her jobs, and everybody's mad at Applebee's for like a whole seven seconds, and it was a big thing, <laughs> right? So <laughs> just know that if you have socially media active employees and there's a problem, it's probably going on social media, right? Unless you have some sort of a policy or plan in advance of all of that. So which is why a ton of people have stayed away from this, right? They're just like, oh my gosh, you can get nothing but trouble. I'm not looking for trouble. I don't, there's not much trouble out there. I mean, there could be, I guess, but there's really not. Um, so this is really like the meat of a business Twitter account. And keep working on that. And I'll show you a couple of ways later it's gonna come up again and again. Um, there are a couple of people, and this guy's one of them, that I want to know when they tweet, okay? This is my husband. He's a social studies teacher and just got back from Washington, D.C., if you can't tell. Um, when he tweets, which is not often, <laughs> um, but I like to know when my husband tweets, right? Um, so I have set up what's called a notification. I go over here and, oops, let's not go crazy. I can go over here and turn on mobile, mobile notifications. So when my husband tweets, or if you have a business account and you're giving it to someone to run, I would highly suggest you do this personally from your Twitter account, it will text me, or I will get a Twitter notification. Actually, it's both. So when my husband tweets, I get a text and a Twitter notification on my phone, but the tweet is there, right? He won't do this for me. <laughs> I tweet way too much, and he's like, my phone goes crazy all day. It's in my desk drawer, and it's like bouncing around, because it's true, I tweet all day long. And he, so we'll get home, and he'll be like, did you see like what Dale Earnhardt Jr.? And I'm like, I tweeted that. He's like, sorry. <laughs> but I, I want to know what his tweets are. If my boss, or my business owner, or anyone else, like there's a, an account in AU, I know when that person tweets, because they're tweeting out all kinds of stuff going on on campus, I want to know. So mobile notifications are pretty awesome. I also get a mobile notification, which is set up in my profile if I am mentioned on Twitter. I get an email and I get a, t a text, which is highly important if you want to be responsive to your customers. So if someone mentions you or tweets at you, you wanna get an instant notification somehow. You'll have to have the mobile app on your phone or you'll have to be getting your email. But people want a response relatively quickly, so you'll want to set that up um, in your profile to receive notifications. It's just important, so you don't go there two weeks later and be like, oh my gosh, people are talking to me, I don't even know it, right? That's not what you want to have happen. And that keeps you from having to check all the time for everything, so um, that's really helpful. There are a couple of business accounts that do a great job. Delta Assist is probably one that I have used recently because here's the thing that I love about this. Delta is training people, don't pick up the phone if you don't want to, because guess what happens when you call Delta? You're gonna be on hold for a long time. But if I can reroute some of those people and you're comfortable with this, they have um, around the clock, seven days a week, 24 seven people answering this. So I had a question about my ticket and I was in Guatemala and couldn't just pick up the phone and call. <laughs> um, so I didn't want to tweet it out because I didn't need my 1,200 followers to be like, oh, so Anna's trying to get an upgrade and get out of Guatemala earlier. But that's, you know, it's not their business. 
But I did direct message them. And they got like right back to me. We have this whole big conversation. And I'm, the whole time I'm direct messaging them on my phone from Guatemala, I'm thinking how genius of them is this because they're helping me and nobody ever dialed the phone. And everybody that's on the phone, there's one less person in the queue. Like I love that. But they're really intentional about saying we're here 24-7. H&R Block right now, if you go to theirs, they will tell you, yeah, no, we're not here 24-7, um, so please don't expect a response. Care team will tell you, we are tweeting 8 to 8 Monday through Friday, 9 to 5 on Saturday. Don't expect us any other time, right? It's all right there. All the good stuff's right there. Um, so your direct messages can be found um, here. So there's a lot of, um, there's my H&R Block care team. I told them exactly what happened, and then they didn't answer me back for like four days. So I was mad at them anyway, which it's tax time. What do you expect? When I decided I was finally going to get like active on Twitter, I started seeking out people who were who I wanted to be someday when I grew up, right? Um, Mark Schaefer is one of those people. So Mark Schaefer is a professor who gets like stupid money to go talk to everybody about social media. So that's who I want to be when I grow up. See, there's Mark. He's real proud of his stuff. But I go through and I look at what he's doing. I look at how he has this all set up. I look at who Mark Schaefer is following, right? He wasn't following 27,000 people when I first found, started following him. But I can go through who he follows and this is where it's very important what you put in your profile because this is what I can read their profiles, right? So you, you creep on the people that are doing what you want to do and maybe you're going to go creep on some other event company, right? Find out who they're following. Maybe they're following like a chair rental place or they're following, you know, a linen company or whatever it might be. Well, shouldn't you be doing, maybe you should be doing that too. I don't know, but they're out there. The other thing is I could go creep on my competition and find out how did they set up their profile? What's their thing, right? Like what's, how's their, how are they extending their brand on Twitter? I'm not saying go copy it. I'm just saying know what your competition's doing, right? They put it out there for you. So I kind of went through, and this is kind of how I figured out who to follow and what's going on on Twitter is I go look at what other people are doing. Um, now, you can spend days, months, weeks, years on Twitter and never even go to anybody else's profile. Um, but if you have a Twitter link from your website that goes to Twitter, it's going to go to your page. So make sure you're happy with your page before you put the little Twitter link on your website. And, you know, people are going to creep on you too. <laughs> so if you want to follow Adam Levine because he just got that really cool back tattoo, Maybe keep that on your personal page. <laughs> Don't let the salon follow him. <laughs> you know, like that's little things that you, people will come and creep on and not understand. Um, I can tell what he's liked. I can, again, go through all of his tweets, which my students were saying, their Twitter, um, I was looking at Ulta, at their Twitter. Somebody did a presentation on Ulta the other day. And they're like, all they were doing was like responding to people. <laughs> Yeah, they're a business. And they were like, but that's all they were tweeting about. And I was like, well, they're a business. Like, people were tweeting at them, so they were responding. That's good business. And they were like, well, it made for a really boring Twitter feed. Well, they're doing an audit, right? So they're trying to find how Ulta is um, presenting their brand. So I'm like, but as a paying customer, you feel pretty good about ordering from Ulta, knowing that if you have a problem, they're going to respond. And they're like, mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> they want to see, like, Ulta's personality in their Twitter profile. And then they got bored and went to Instagram so they could look at pictures. <laughs> um, even if you only have four followers and one of them is your spouse and the other one's your mom. Doesn't matter. You have to start looking at Twitter as an extension of your brand. Make it a conversation you would have with people. It's okay for your business account to tweet out things. How are you today? I did this for you guys last night because this is so fun. Um, you can now do polls on Twitter. So last night, my son's reading this book in third grade, and we had this big discussion at the dinner table, who is faster, a fairy or a giant? So I can do a poll really quick, 
We're not supposed to have our phones at the table, but I'm the mom. I'm always exempt from those rules. So I tweeted, um, like, help settle this dinner at my house debate who travels faster, a giant or a fairy. The, the nine-year-old thinks it's a giant, so he's losing. I made sure I told him that before I left the house, too. <laughs> Just going to tell you. Um, my engagement rate's pretty low, right? <laughs> it's like 1,200 people following me, which my students think makes me some sort of rock star. I'm like, I could maybe go find five of those people. Let's not get excited about that. Um, but I've got people that are voting, right? And the cool thing about when you do a poll is at the end of this, the people that voted in my poll get a message from Twitter. It says, a poll you voted in just ended. Here's the results. So it'd be fun to do polls, right? Blonde or brunette? Arched eyebrows are flat. <laughs> Before Photoshop, after Photoshop. Like, there's a ton of fun stuff you can do. Quick poll, totally free, right? It, it, it just extends that engagement. It extends a lot of really fun things that you can do. Um, there are things now on tweets where you can go in and look at your tweet activity. And if you have like a really, really, really good tweet, like something you're really, really proud of, and all this, like I tweeted out um, Friday night, and it was probably the one tweet where I was laughing so hard before I hit send that I was like, this one's going to be awesome. And it was. Like, I had people high-fiving me. I was at an event at Anderson University, and I had people high-fiving me. Like, that tweet was hilarious. I still have kids stopping by my office. I was like, okay, I got to pin that, and which I'll talk about in a minute. But that was, like, really good. But if you have a tweet and you're particularly proud of it, and people that are currently following you love it, and you think... I bet people that don't even know me would love this. You might just want to play around with paying a little bit of money and picking your demographic and picking where that's going to go and picking what time and for how long and just throw it up there on Twitter as a promoted tweet and see what you get, right? If it's worth it to you and you can go in and that before you hit like buy or purchase or send or tweet, it'll tell you exactly how much it's going to cost and it'll tell you who's going to reach it reach and it'll tell you what it's going to do for you. But those aren't bad things to do. Again, I'm not selling anything. I haven't run through all this whole thing yet. But it is getting easier and better because you guys are the ones that will keep Twitter in business. So they're doing a much better job. You do get one pinned tweet, right? One of your like rock star tweets that you're proud of or says who you're about or maybe some celebrity or some bride, somebody has like done something and it is like your prideful moment on Twitter. Pen it. It stays at the top of your account all the time. That was the funniest thing I put on Twitter in a long time and it got good engagement so I just left it there. Um, I can go in at any time and look at the traction on that, on that though and decide to pull it down and switch it out. If I was strategic and I was in business and I was trying to make money, I would probably do that fairly often. The other thing you can do is you can go into your account and you can pull up Twitter analytics. Fascinating information here. Completely fascinating. So if you go on a big campaign to get people to follow you on Twitter and you promote your Twitter and you put it on your web page and you do, maybe you want to do some sort of like fun Twitter um, like follow frenzy contest or something where you're going to go collect. Then you can really start to get to the meat of who's following. You can go in and you can take a look at your followers and find out all you want to know about them. Um, it'll give you your tweet highlights. See, there was my tweet. 19, I've never had 19 people like one tweet. Um, and again, Twitter will let me promote it from here. It doesn't matter how old your tweet is. You can promote it anytime you want to. And they'll help you clean it up and everything. It'll tell you who your top follower is for the month. It'll give you all of your monthly, um, how many tweets you sent, what your impressions were, how many people mentioned you, how many people viewed your profile, um, new followers. You can go through and take a look at tons of different information that they have. And it's all free. It's all right there for you. Um, you can keep going down. This is your 28-day summary. Um, because today's, you know, it goes by month. So you can take a look at, that's your analytics for home. Those, here are my tweets, right? So I can take a look at what tweets I got, how often I'm tweeting. I can take a look, am I still as consistent as I was last month, right? Am I dropping off? Am I consistent? How many people are clicking through my links? Um, 
most Google Analytics will tell you that like around one to two percent of people are coming to your website from your social media pages. Um, but there may be a time when you do something to promote your website or do a call to action on Twitter, you want to see that increase. Knowing who your followers are, you will have levels of followers, right? You'll have people that will follow you just because they're following people. You will have people like me that every time they come to your establishment will check in, right? That gives you a gross impression. Somehow follow up with that. You will have people that every time they come into the salon and do something or every, when they get their pictures back or every time they come to the theater, they will post about it. And you have to respond and thank them and retweet and share and do it. The minute they hit that button, if they take a selfie at a show and they hit that button and it goes out to the world, it's yours to use too, right? Get the picture, re repurpose it for whatever you need to do. That stuff, it's out there. It's for you to use. It's fine. Um, before and after pictures for things. Um, if you're at a wedding, right, or if you're doing senior pictures and you just take a picture of like some creative looking thing that doesn't even put the person's face on there and say doing senior pictures or, or you know, it was one of my highlights of my job or whatever, you know, and just constantly having something out there because <laughs> you may feel like you're tweeting a lot it's really not, it's a drop in the bucket. They say if you want to be active and noticed on Twitter, it's a minimum of 20 times a day, right? It's, it's exhausting to think about. Even I can't even do that. Your job is to have your customers love you enough to generate content. Best, happiest days of my life, okay, not of my life, but of my professional social media obsession part of my life, is when a brand will tweet me back. I, I asked that in class. How many of you have gotten a response or a retweet or something from someone? Like, that's the day the kids are like the most excited, right? They're like, oh, I want to tell you, I want to tell you. So this one time, right? They're all excited about it. Now, I had a kid dancing with the stars. They won like some sort of backstage swag packet. That was like, they were all excited. But then I got another kid like Hershey retweeted something. They, I mean, that, these kids were like that excited. But if, I can't, if, you, if I'm doing business with you and I'm giving you my money, I'm going to get just as excited. We're just narcissists like that, right? Which is like, if you pay a little bit of attention to me for that moment, I feel that warm fuzzy, I'll be back, right? And then here's the stupid thing. I will tweet at a business. They will tweet me back. Guess what I do with that tweet? I retweet it. Oh, my gosh. Now the business has been mentioned like three times. I'm all excited, right? We, we're friends now. Right? We're that we're tight. We were tight before because I gave you money, but now we're tighter than tight, right? I mean, that's just it's the weird thing about social media and the psychology behind it. So look for those opportunities. If you are comfortable when people are doing business with you, ask them if they're on Twitter. Look for them. If you have five or six just really solid customers and you think, I bet you're on Twitter, look for them. Follow them, thank them publicly, mention them, whatever it might be. Just be intentional about it, right? Make it an extension of your brand. Make it sound like a conversation you would have with someone. Twitter cards are something you can look into where you can put your email and your web address. It's kind of virtually handing somebody a business card on Twitter. Um, and I'm not 100% sure if you want to do a really flashy, fun, cool, awesome Twitter card. They're probably going to want some money. So just use your um, profile as your Twitter card, but it is one thing you can do. Um, the reason that Twitter wants you to do a Twitter card is collecting information about you, right? Um, so be aware of like whatever you're going to give them. They're probably going to come back and use it to sell you stuff. Um, the photos are another really good thing. Just like Facebook, photos and quick video segments of things always get the best engagement on Facebook or on Twitter. We just, and quotes, quotes. Get yourself a calendar and know like when National Nurses Day is. No National Donut Day, right? Yesterday was like chips and salsa day or so. There's a day everywhere. Um, and it's okay to get involved in that stuff, like National Nurses Day, all that. Use it, right? It's relevant. Um, you can go in and you can add four or five photos and do a collage. You can tag people. In that. So if somebody comes in and you're following them and they're following you and they take a picture and they want 
Or you can go in and go ahead and tag yourself in other people's pictures. If they come to the theater and you want to tag the theater account, you can do that. Um, you can put in your location. Here's where you do your poll. All of that's really easy when you go to compose a new tweet. But using pictures of anything is going to get you more engagement, right? It's just how we think now. They see the words, and those are words, right? They see the picture, and all of a sudden there's a story. So that's how I get past sometimes the 140 character limit is if I want to describe like this awesome breakfast I'm having, I'll just take a picture of the breakfast, right? And be like, goals. You can keep your own followers in lists as a way of keeping track of everybody. So I've got lists that I have gone through. This is tedious, I'll tell you if you don't keep up with it. I was teaching the class over the summer and I was going to show lists and I went back and realized I quit doing lists about 300 followers in, and I was over 1,000 at this point, so I had a list day at my house. It was not fun. Um, but, and I can lock my list. So I have a list of 85 people who are AU, faculty, staff, students, but I locked it. Why would I lock it? I don't need anybody else to come in here and try to solicit to my people, right? Like, I'm gonna lock that down. Nobody can tell I have that list. It's my list for my reference. It's where I put people, but I keep it locked. Same thing when I had students, like high school students. I, nobody needed to see that. Now, I follow brands. I follow techie people. I'm so, I teach sports marketing, so I follow professional athletes. Um, and then that I start now. Um, I can come up here and look at lists that I've been put on, member of. And nothing makes me more excited than when somebody adds me to a list because I feel really important. It's better, than being, it's better than being tweeted back to. So I tweeted about NASCAR, so somebody added me to a list of NASCAR. I'm, I don't know, it's a lot of pressure. I don't know what he's thinking he's going to get out of that, but <laughs> he did it. Um, this person has a list of 4,591 people about digital marketing. I, that's a lot of people on that list. You don't have to follow the people to put them on the list. But if you want to start a list of like rock star customers and start adding people, to, they'll see that you've added them to the list. If you want to start a list of like um, high maintenance customers, <laughs> I'd lock that one. <laughs> just, just FYI. Huh? Can you tweet just to the list? No. Which is kind of a pain. Um, and, like I was waiting for somebody to say, like, what's the benefit of a list? I'm not 100% sure. The benefit of the list, um, somebody else started the AU list. I went and made sure I followed all those people. If I were looking for new people in terms of social media and sports, I can go, I can subscribe to this list, which will have me receive the tweets from the people on the list without me following them, which is kind of nice. Um, I can click here for members and go through, and again, these are everybody's profiles. See how important the profile keeps coming up and coming up and coming up? I can go through and de determine who to follow. Um, one benefit of lists that I've seen, um, I worked at a Disney children's company, they had a newsletter, so I used the list function for the newsletter curation. For oh, nice. Channels, so I followed like, certain accounts that I knew they'd want to use. Yeah, you can be extremely strategic mm -hmm. with who you have lists for. Um, and maybe you want to do a list of your competitors, right? And then you just pull it up and you can run down through and see what they're doing. I mean, it's real easy to do. If you have your list locked, they don't know that you're adding to, to the list. If you don't have your list locked and you add somebody to the list, they're going to get a notification, which I think I got one. I got too many notifications to find. But, but if people that you are interested in how they're functioning or like you find somebody in your industry that's doing a great job on Twitter and they've got some lists, I highly recommend looking at who's on their list. But yeah, you can use it for your strategy, you can use it for ways to communicate, you can use it for ways to just tweet at certain people. I was on hold with Comcast because it's what you do when you have cable and it doesn't work right all the time. So I'm on hold and you know, they're like, your wait time is predicted to be another 17 minutes. So I had nothing to do, so I tweeted. Guess who the reply came from? The first response to my tweet came from? Direct TV. 
Why wait? Call us now. Very smart. About two minutes later, the Comcast Cares account came and said, DM me your phone number, someone will call you. And by golly, I did. I clicked on his little Comcast Cares account, said, Alex, here's my number. He replied back immediately, are you still on hold? And I was like, yeah, but the good news is I only have 16 and a half minutes left. And he said, hang up now, someone will call you. And they did. And I think, no wonder other people who don't have Twitter are on hold for 17 minutes, because you're busy with the squeaky wheels, right? Like, whatever. <laughs> but there's, you know, like when you're the big business, like Sam was talking earlier, when you're the big business, you can pay for those things. Taco Bell's got a cool thing. Now, if you tweet at Taco Bell, and an emoji, they retweet back immediately with the emoji as a Taco Bell. Like, in the, like I sent the crying um, face, and it was in the middle of a taco, right? And I'm like, oh my gosh, there are 200 other emojis. I'll be here all day just like going to town. <laughs> but they pay for that. Coke paid millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars for the little tiny Coke bottle emoji. We're not all to that level yet, but stuff is going on, right? It always starts with the big people and then trickles down. So you might have some fun scissor emoji someday. I don't know. What other kind of questions? Good ones, deep ones, simple ones, silly ones. Yes. How many hashtags should we put per <laughs> Love the hashtag question. Um, since you're not a 19-year-old, oh, I didn't even click on the Twitter chat thing. I'll make sure you guys get this. Um, since you're not 19, <laughs> I will say, <laughs> don't be this person, right? And I do that a lot too. I'm always like, hashtag, you know, can't wait to. I am too. I'm that person, but if I was that business, I wouldn't be. Um, you got to make sure you're real intentional about what you're hashtagging. Um, and again, you can have all the education system you want out there for your customers. Like, our hashtag is this. Hashtag senior, blah, 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 whatever. They're not going to get it. It's not their job to get it. It's your job to take their content and share it. Um, this is the other one thing I wanted to share with you guys. This is a little old, but it's still very accurate. Um, social media turns good customer service into great marketing because 92% of people will trust their family and friends. Now, <laughs> we all know what Facebook has done to the definition of that word, right? My niece has 2,200 friends on Facebook. No, she doesn't. But 2,200 people labeled as friends. So what a friend, what constitute a friend is a wider net than what you and I are used to in our lifetimes, right? Other online customers, 70% of people will trust other online customers, which is why I have the Amazon app, and I didn't even buy a toothpaste, right, at Walmart without scanning it with the Amazon app and reading Right, because my son's got braces, I had to find the right toothpaste. Couldn't be that mom, just about regular toothpaste. Right, so I'm having like a whole strategic purchase decision happening in the aisle at Walmart with complete and total strangers. I'm smart enough to know that some of those people were probably given free toothpaste and paid to review it. But I still went with the one that had the highest stars. And I always go to the people that rated it the lowest, right? Oh, Four one stars, what was their problem? I gotta get down there and find out what's going on with that, right? I don't know those people. They may not even, I mean, I don't even know if they're real people. But I'm gonna trust them before I trust what, what Crest tells me. I've been hearing from Crest and they're four out of five dentists my entire life, right? I don't know those dentists, I don't trust them. But total strangers all day, right? So your hashtag question is, I would develop yourself, either their event hashtags, maybe you're doing hashtags for your clientele, maybe you're doing hashtags for your students, maybe you're doing hashtags for an event, like a graduation. You can have different hashtags and use them at different times. I like hashtags for businesses because they're searchable. Um, the trending topics that are always happening um, used to just be hashtag, hashtag driven. So right now the NFL combine's going on, right? So there are tons of people down there tweeting about the combine that aren't using the NFL's official hashtag, but Twitter has the algorithm that'll pull on all of the NFL and the combine and they'll put it in there. Kind of like the moments thing. You know, like there used to be a ton of pressure. If I don't use the right hashtag, my, my tweet might not make it. Then I make the cut. Well, that's not even true anymore. I mean, you can go in and you can do that. You can also go in and there's an advanced search on Twitter 
where you can search out people in your area and different things in your area. I mean, it's, there's so much. There, I could be here for like days telling you all the like ins and outs of all that stuff. Basically, what I want you to leave here with today is there's no right or wrong, right? If you are tweeting to your customers and your students and the community about a graduation and you got four hashtags, use them all four in that, Twitter, in that tweet. If they make sense and that's strategic and that's good, just know that as a, as a Twitter follower, I may pick one of those and click on it. And if it's for your students, because I'm thinking about applying there, I'm going to want to see good intentional content about you showing your students love and your students growth and where your students are placed and student oriented stuff. If I click on graduation, I don't want to see anybody's like before and after haircut, right? That should be another hashtag. Like the, the hashtag should be searchable and, and usable by your customers or hilarious and funny, which I think most of mine are. But again, I'm not trying to sell anything. But that is a great question. As long as they're intentional, it doesn't matter if they make sense. It's good. But use them as a bookmark. Use them as a way that a customer can click and learn more and pull in all of the times you've used the hashtag. There are hashtag sites where you can go and research the hashtag because the last thing you want to do is share a hashtag with your competitor or somebody, right? You want to make sure you have a really good hashtag. Um, we had an event on campus the other day and you know, some student thought an AUFNL2016 hashtag would be great. And I had three people say, what's with the really long hashtag? And I'm like, it's not super califragilistic. It's not that long. But this feels long when you're having to type those out. So just be intentional and be consistent with how you use your hashtag. And I think occasionally there's no problem with using more than that. And you will get customers that will figure it out. I love a good hashtag, like a company create a hashtag. What else? How many of you are completely overwhelmed and think, I can't do this? <laughs> Start with a locked private account and just watch for a while. Get comfortable with the environment, right? Build it slowly if you need to. And, and you'll get there. And about the time you feel like you got it all figured out, Twitter's going to pop up with some new change or anything. And it's really easy to keep track of what Twitter's changing um, on there. They have the small business page. Um, they have advanced search. They have a bunch of different, um, oh, I love this one too. Like, make sure your tweets are very intentional. Like, target, write it, have some engagement, making sure you're tracking that. Anytime you're tweeting from a business account, and you hit that tweet button and you walk away, make sure you come back, right? Come back and see, did anybody see it? Did I get pretty good engagement? Then like, can I repurpose that later, right? And when I say repurpose it later, don't like take the tweet and just put it out, like copy and paste it and make it look new again later. But there's nothing wrong with that. People aren't that into you. Wasn't that a book? He's just not, people aren't that into you that they're gonna say, oh, they just tweeted this a week ago Wednesday. Nobody, I'm, we'd love to think people care that much. They, they got too much other stuff rolling through, right? So as much as you think you're tweeting too much, you probably aren't. But yeah, if you're overwhelmed, start with a locked account and just go and give yourself a little bit of time to get comfortable with it. it takes a while. Live in that landscape a little bit.